Hello. Um, there's lots of you here today, which is fantastic. Fantastic for open source, of course. Uh, somewhat scary for me, but fantastic for open source. And you're here from a number of different backgrounds, from cultures that are diverse, from geographic regions spread around the world. I see old people, young people, men and women. This is excellent. This is fantastic. And I think this is truly the motivator and the fundamental behind open source. Now, I've been asked to come here today and give you a talk about the governance within Orange. And I think it's important to understand before we look at the, the what, the where, the how, as to why. Why a governance? Why open source? And truly, you guys here today are the motivator, are the reason, are, I think, the key ingredient of open source, because open source is made by people like you, and it's a social catalyst. So we see open source as breaking down silos within the organization, between organization, enhancing the dynamics between people and between groups, and promoting the experience and the sharing across cultures, and of course, personal recognition. And, oh, okay. So truly, through that collaboration, open source, and I think this has been repeated a number of times today, but we can see that open source is revolutionizing uh, ICT. Uh, we skipped forward a slide, but there were some quotes around collaboration. But open source is revolution ICT. This is not news to you. You've heard this this morning. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. But clearly, open source is now present within the cloud, the Internet of Things, obviously development technologies, big data, data centers, infrastructure, network virtualization, all the subjects which today impact communications, impact the transformation of the telecom world. OK, so is open source really of interest to a telco? Uh, yes. Obviously, there are thousands, if not millions, of initiatives today that are using open source. And these have a monetary value, a revenue value. We've seen, uh, Gregory showed uh, one of the statistics earlier, which I've also uh, picked out, which is the Linux Foundation has identified or evaluated its code base at around $5 billion worth of development. In GitHub, now the, the latest statistics I could find were from 2013, but in 2013, GitHub had over 10 million repositories with over 3 million new users in that year. So these are huge numbers. So obviously, open source is a driver of economic value as well. But again, it's not just a driver of economic value. And I think companies are starting to wake up to the freedoms that open source offers, as well as the values. So the fact that open source is auditable and verifiable, the fact that it supports and encourages universal access, accessibility for all people within society and all employees within a company, avoidance of supplier lock-in, so interoperability, stability, freedom of competition. So Orange is committed to open source, and Orange is committed to open source massively within its ecosystem. You can see the open source, um, I won't le read all the, the points, but open source is used throughout the different services, products, and infrastructure that today make up a modern global telecommunications company, from the applications right down to the core networking. And this is indeed significant. OK, but open source itself has all those benefits. That's great. We, we saw this morning all the benefits. There are four major challenges that open source brings with it to industry. 
So it's ensuring, of course, the respect for the license conditions and laws. Open source comes with licenses. They guarantee your freedoms. They model your communities. They develop uh, the, the code and protect your property. But those licenses have to be respected. Within a group, we have to encourage the promotion of open source. Of, of course, uh, there's always challenges, there's always hesitations. So there's always the need to promote. We need to educate around the opportunities which are ever increasing and the obligations which we've already touched upon. And last but not least, in fact, maybe it should have come first, is the fact that we need to manage our contributions. So open source, we all know, is a great innovator. It's a way of people sharing and of collaborating. But that means we have to play the game. Open source is not open source unless we're really joining in to that paradigm. So managing the contributions that we can feed back into the open source projects is of vital importance and promoting those contributions. So how has Orange structured its governance? Now, the governance has been set up a couple of years ago, a number of years ago, in order to ensure consistency of open source policy across the group, a group which spans more than 30 countries, 260 million clients, over 160,000 employees, and numerous, numerous legal entities. So we've been set up to ensure consistency of policy across those entities and across the group. But we've tried to do so in a way that is as close as possible to the open source model itself as can be done. So the governance, which is represented by the huge black uh, symbol in the middle, is really enacted by the open source reference that we have positioned throughout the entities of the group. And these reference are people who do open source within their daily work. They are technical experts, they are domain experts, whether it's pure technology or IP or standards or legal or HR even. These experts, they have their daily work, but they are also passionate advocates of open source and executors of open source policy within the group. So they are as close as you can get to the community. They provide assistance to projects. They promote open source. They communicate around them. They help the governance carry forward various transverse work streams. And in turn, those reference feed back into the governance. Ideas, energy, uh, thoughts, contributions, and that in turn is fed back up the chain towards the, the strategic directions of the group, whether that's Horizon 2020, legal teams, IP policy, or standardization policy. So the governance really is a governance modeled in the open source vein of the people for the people, if you like, um, which is uh, set up in uh, a close and energetic way. We have four ambitions within the governance. That is to uh, promote open source as preferred uh, software uh, paradigm or concept, if you like, in all domains, to make sure that contribution is part of the technical strategy of the group. As I said, being open source is not just being a user, it means giving back and participating into the various, uh, the various initiatives that exist. For example, uh, OPNFV, uh, we have a board member on o the OPNFV uh, uh, initiative, and various other initiatives as well. Partnerships with other actors, other operators, where, of course, it's possible. And legal and intellectual risks under control. So these are the four main drivers for the open source governance, executed by those reference who work in the different entities. It's transversal and it's transformational. It impacts all of the company, all of the directions, 
from the lower people to the highest people, from technical skills to non-technical skills, to business process to functional, to clients to employees. So that governance answers our needs today in order to try and promote open source use within Orange. But it still leaves a number of questions which I think are open for the industry as a whole. Now these are questions which have various answers. Some don't have any answers as of yet. It's how to articulate open source agility with the needs for industry standards, interoperability, and technical stability. Open source, as we know, is very agile, is very innovative, it moves quickly. How do we align that with the need for standards within the telecommunications world or in other industries, I'm imagining? How to position open source within the dynamic of development chains, procurement processes, and how to measure the economic impacts. So I think we all agree that open source is not a quick win uh, or a long win even uh, economic gain. So really, how do you measure economic impact? Yes, there are economic gains linked to licenses, but there's more than that. And when you save on licenses, you reinvest in contribution and in project, in adaptation. So how do you measure these economic impacts? This is a, a, an interesting, but of course an important question. How to handle the open source compliance process, not within a company, but within a supply chain where multiple companies are linked together? And how to valorize and the participation of employees within the open source dynamic? How to balance their professional interests with their personal interests? How to motivate and, and push forward open source as, a, as an encouragement, as a, as, a, as a motor of personal recognition. So these are interesting questions, of course, for a governance. Um, it's something we look at all the time. Um, and I think uh, that uh, it's something that will help transform Orange as a group over the years to come. So this is a quick snapshot of how Orange has organized its governance. Why, from the economic benefits, the social benefits, to the how, and some of the questions that we're now looking at as well. So I finished slightly ahead of time, but thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have a great uh, conference. And of course, if you have any questions for me, uh, I'll be available uh, either this afternoon or tomorrow as well. Thank you.